Good morning, everyone. Good morning. A very warm welcome to church this morning as we gather together to worship the Lord and to be encouraged by each other's company and also to be enriched by his holy word. I want to read to, to all of us a small portion of scripture from the book of Psalms, Psalm, num number, Psalm 95, reading from first verse. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing praise, psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land too. And then the psalmist says, Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. So friends, we are the flock under his care. We are here to worship him and to bow down before him and to give all praise and honor to this great God, the king of all kings, the king above all gods. So let's take this time and do just that and do justice to the love and the protection and the care the Lord has given us by giving him all the praise and glory. Shall we all stand? <clears throat> Job in his writings says, For I know my Redeemer lives, and in the end he will stand on the earth. And I know that though my flesh be destroyed, yet with my eyes I will see God. So the first song that we are going to sing is going to acknowledge that our Lord is alive and well, and that he is our Redeemer, and that one day we are going to see him face to face. And we are going to stand with him, for all glory and honor will be his, as it is now, even then. Let's sing our first song, For I Know My Redeemer Lives. We are going to wait till the words come up on screen. Think of the psalm that we just heard being read to us until the words come up. And also the words that we are going to sing, For I know my Redeemer lives. Let's pray till the words come up on the screen and just commit this time to Jesus. And ask the Lord to be with us this morning, to take away all obstacles that might come our way, and to just take this time to his hands and to be with us as we worship him. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, because you are our God, and we are your flock, whom you protect and you provide for, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because you are the God above all gods, you are the king above all kings, and there's nothing that can compare to you. Thank you, Father, because we know that even if we are dead or alive, we will always be with you, Father. And thank you, Father, because just as Job wrote, we can acknowledge that we know that my Redeemer lives and that you will stand with us all the time throughout our lives, no matter what happens to us, Father. Father, we want to thank you because you are such an awesome and great God who takes us through every situation in life. And at this time, all the words of the songs that we sing, Father, we pray that it will be a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Father, as we bring it to you as a token of our love and gratitude for all that you have done for us. Father, we pray that nothing will come between you and us this morning throughout this worship service, Father. And we break down all barriers in the name of Jesus. And we ask, Lord, that you will reign among us at this time. Holy Spirit of the living God, we ask that you will fall afresh on us, Father, this morning. And that we will worship you in spirit 
and in truth, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much because you are our Redeemer who lives. Let's sing to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> should be destroyed yet with my eyes I will see God for I know that my Redeemer lives sing loud to the Lord Thank you, Father, because we will stand with you on that day and we know that you are the God who lives. Because the Bible tells us, Father God, that there's nothing that changes with you. And we want to thank you, Father, because the reason why we will live with you forever is because you came down to this world, Father God, Jesus. You came down to this world to die on that cross for us, to redeem us from all our sins, Father. So we want to therefore give you thanks for that right now, Lord, because we know that the reason why we can sing out to you like this and proclaim that my Redeemer lives with us and that we will live with you is because you died on that cross to save us from our sins, Father. And you have promised us eternal life with you when we believe you, Father God. And thank you for that, Father. We want to give you our thanks and praise at this time as we sing our next song. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, our Son. Let's sing to Him. Sing it with a heart of gratitude and praise and give Him all the glory. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give
sing that once again to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Thank you, Jesus, for your love for us. Thank you, Holy One, for your goodness to us. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ is Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus. Friends, are you feeling weak in any area of your life at this time? Am I feeling weak in any area of my life at this time? The song reminds us that we can say that we are strong in Jesus because he is with us and he is holding our hand and he is carrying us through. The Bible says that his love has no beginning or end and nothing com can compare to it. And that Jesus is holding our hand all the days of our lives through thick and thin, taking us through. And even as we sing our next song, let's just commit ourselves to him, rededicate our lives and say, Father, draw me close to you and never let me go, Father. I want to lay it all down for you, Father God. And I ask that you will take control of me, the good and the bad both, Father, and make me something beautiful in your sight. Father God, we just want to thank you because you love us in spite of our wickedness, Father. In spite of our shortcomings, you love us unconditionally, Father God. And we ask that you will draw us, each and every one of us, closer to you this morning, Father, that we may live that life that is worthy of your praise and your acceptance, Father. Let's sing to Jesus in an attitude of worship, dedicating our lives to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father God. Draw me close to you.
Draw me close to you. Draw me close to you, Father God. And never let me go. Never let me go. Father God, we want to thank you for your love to us. Praise you, Jesus. We raise you up. Thank you, Jesus. To hear you say that I'm your friend. Hear my desire. Father, we bring to you in prayer all that concerns us at this time, Lord. Father, we want to pray to you about the world at large with all the happenings in it at this time, Father. We want to ask that you will take control, Lord, of all the health issues, the economic issues, and all other issues that surround us in this world today, Father. We want to pray that you will just take control of each and every person, Lord, and that you will let thy will be done according to your will, Father God. Father, we pray for every country that is going through turmoil at this time, both due to the pandemic and also due to the economic downfall that has been the result of such pandemic, Lord. And we ask, Father God, that you will help every nation to come out of it, Father God, in your own good time. Lord, we bring to you our country and all that is happening within our country, Lord. Lord, we bring to you the new government, the new parliament that has been enacted, Father. And we ask that you will give them wisdom and understanding that comes from you to govern our people well, Lord. And we pray that your will will prevail no matter who is in power, Father, because we know that you are ultimately in control of each of us, even though we may know it or not, Lord. And Jesus, we commit all people in our land, everyone in every nook and corner, Father, asking that your providence and your protection will be upon our nation at this difficult time. And Lord, we also ask that your gospel will spread to every corner of this land, Father God, and that they will hear the good news if they have not heard it already, Father, and that you will use the church, the church at large, to be instruments that take that gospel to them in our land, Lord. Jesus, we pray for our church. We pray for the upcoming AGM, Father, we pray for every single person who will take up office in the months and years to come, Lord. We pray for every leader, every group, and every individual who serves in such groups, Lord, that you will bless each and every one of us, not for us, but to do work that is worthy of your praise, Father, that we will do our utmost for you, Father God, that we will do what we have to do to the best of our ability so that you will be glorified, Father. We ask that every single member of this 
church in all three congregations will be touched and blessed by you to be more effective, to be more productive, Father God, and to be spiritually aware of what is required of all of us, Father. And we pray for a spiritual awakening in all three congregations, Father God, so that this church will go forward from strength to strength, Lord Jesus, that we will pick up from where we have stopped and that we will walk that extra mile for you, Jesus. Father, we want to pray for all the children in our church, for the Kitumitu Maga, and also for every other child who is not in Kitumitu Maga. Every child, we pray, Father, that you will bless them, Lord Jesus, and that the next generation will be built by you, Father God, so that there will be a strong generation that takes up leadership in this church in the years to come, Father God. And Father, we now pray for ourselves, for everything that concerns us. Only you can see our hearts, Lord, even though we try to hide things from you. We know that we cannot hide anything because you are our God who sees us through and through. Lord, as we take up every challenge in life that comes before us, we thank you because you are our God who is with us all the time, Father, and you will never, ever let us down. Thank you because you will attend to every area of concern in our hearts individually, Father. For ourselves, for our families, for our children, for our jobs, for our work and for our ministry. Thank you because there's nothing that surpasses your knowledge. And therefore at this time, we want to bring to you our individual prayers and supplications. Understanding and believing with all our heart that you are listening to us and that you will never let us down. Let's take a few seconds in silence. Talk to the Lord. Tell him everything that you want to tell him, friends, because he is the God who draws us closer to himself. Father, we bring to you every situation. If there's anyone here who, today who is suffering from health issues, we pray for complete healing in the name of Jesus. Father, if there's any one of us going through financial difficulty, we pray for a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for every person who's struggling with a relationship at this time in this church, and we ask that you will give the solution that you want to give for every such situation. Lord, we pray for every child, young adult and adult. Lord, we ask that you will undertake for all our needs because we know that you are our faithful God and we serve an abundantly faithful God who won't let us down. So we thank you, Lord. And as we sing this next song, we want to acknowledge your faithfulness to our lives, Jesus. And we just give you thanks from the bottom of our hearts because we serve a God who is faithful, who will never let us down. Let's sing to Jesus our next song. Raise your voices and sing to him and say, Father, you are faithful and I want to thank you for it. Oh 
shelter of your wings, hear my heart's reply, singing what a faithful God have I. What a faithful God have I, yes, faithful. Comfort you have given. I will tell of your great love for as long as I live. Singing, what a faithful God have I! What a faithful God have I! Faithful God, thank you, Jesus. What a faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this time. We ask that you will bless us as we listen to your word, Father God, and that you will continue to touch us and teach us and make new ways for us to know you better and to draw closer to you, Father. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. The Bible reading is taken from Genesis chapter 6, verses 9 to 14 and verse 22, and uh, chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. Verse 22. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Chapter 7. The Lord then said to Noah, Go into the ark you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here in the house of the Lord this morning. And um, as we have already heard read from the passage, Genesis chapter 6, verse 7 to 14 and verse 22. Um, actually, it's both Genesis chapter 6 and 7, but because... Both are lengthy passages. I decided to choose a few verses from each uh, passage. And uh, the title that I have given this morning for our reflection is, Are You in the Ark? Are You in the Ark? Uh, the story that was read to us is a very well-known sto story. And I'm sure at some point in our life, uh, when we were at Sunday school or even much later, we have all heard Noah's story. And Noah's story and Noah, uh, the whole theme, uh, is often uh, portrayed in birthday cakes and, you know, for theme parties. But, you know, there's much more deeper meaning behind 
uh, Noah's Ark and what happened. So this is a story that we all know, but let's look at what God has to teach us from this passage this morning. Noah's story is a story of God's judgment upon this earth. Um, we heard the passage where in verse 12, chapter 6, verse 12, that was read to us, God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. All the people, God saw how corrupt the earth had become. Yes, God created this beautiful earth, and he, when he created this world, he had a plan and he had a purpose. But as a result of the fall, we see how the world took, uh, the cre God's creation, God's people took life into their own hands, and little by little, they started to drift away from God's original plan. And they went away, and there was evil, there's corruption that God saw. And we saw, you know, how God regrets creating mankind. You know, his heart was uh, filled with sadness when he saw uh, what was happening in this world. But here we notice that God gives us a second chance. And God is a God of second chances. But one thing that we need to remind ourselves is just like there was judgment in the Old Testament through this story, one day, you and I, we need to stand before that seat of uh, judgment. We all, need to be, uh, we, we all need to be before him on that day of judgment. But the question is, are we ready? Are we prepared? Because we are living in a day, you know, uh, when we look at this particular verse and when we look at some of the things that are happening around us, there's not much of a difference. There's corruption, there's evil, even right now. And maybe, not maybe, you know, it's much worse than what it was back in Noah's days. And yes, God will put an end to all of this, and we all need to stand before him that day of judgment. And we do not know as to when that day of judgment is going to be. It can be tomorrow, it can be the day after, because time is in his hands. But this morning, I just want to ask us whether we are in the ark. In other words, are we walking in line with God's plans and purposes? Are we in obedience to his word so that even if the flood comes, even if judgment comes tomorrow, that we will not be left? Like that 10 virgins where five were ready, but there was other five that was not ready. So let's look at what we can learn from this passage that was read to us. And the first thing that I would like to leave with you this morning is when God designed us, when God created us, he designed us to be different. Each one of us, we're called to be unique. Each one of us, we're called to be different. So this morning, what does it mean to be different? We notice in verse 9 that Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. Let's keep going to the next slide. Next one. Right. Great. Thank you. Um, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. There are three things that are mentioned about Noah here. First, he was a righteous man. Second, he was blameless. And thirdly, he was faithful. He was faithful, faithfully walked with God. And he walked faithfully with God. What does that mean to us today? If we were to put our names instead of Noah, for example, Joshua was a righteous man, blameless among the people um, of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Can we also be able to say the same this morning? If we were to put our names in the place of Noah, what does righteous mean? You know, it mentions here that he was a righteous man. It starts with right thinking, you know, where God is calling us for that right living. And that's where in this world, in this corrupt world, in this evil world, you and I, we are called to be that people who are different in our thinking, in our speech, in our act. Wherever God has placed us, starting from our family circle, in our neighbors, in our workplaces, among our friends, in our church, 
Are we people who exhibit that righteous life? Noah stood out. There was something different about Noah that caught God's attention. What about us? When Jesus left this earth, you know, he wanted you and I to be the witness here on earth. He wanted us to be imitators of him. And are we living that life where God can, you know, where we are living the life of witness like Noah did? The life that was different, the life that brought change and transformation. Righteous man, blameless. There was absolutely nothing that God can find fault in Noah. Blameless. I know it's very difficult. We're living in a fallen world, and it's hard where God can look at us and say, you know what, I see a blameless life in you. You know, not in the areas where others can see, but in areas where no one can see, where only God can see us. You know, as I always say, when rubber meets the road, when we are fined by the police guy, right? It's so easy for us to give that thousand rupees and say, you know what, keep it, thank you. Why? Because we don't want to take that narrow path. Can we be blameless even in that area? In every little area, can we say, God, you know, I'm blameless before you because we are one day going to be before him and we need to be clean. And then walked faithfully. We sang this morning, what a faithful God have I. Yes, he is a faithful God. But what about us? Are we being faithful in the place that God has entrusted? Are we faithful in the little things that God has entrusted into our hands? Can God say that we are faithful generation? Faithful, not just in the things that we entrusted, but in the mandate of making disciples, in reaching out to people. Are we faithful? I was looking at Romans 4, and then it talks about Abraham, and in, in, that, in that particular ch uh, chapter, it talks about against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. And he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised, this is why it was credited to him as righteousness. Can you see Abraham's life? Another character in the scripture. Why was he character righteous or why was it credited to him as righteousness? Because even though he did not know what was going to happen, even though that was the facts, the situation, the circumstances around him was absolutely dead, but he still hoped in hope, and that is God, against all hope, and he did not waver. He did not waver through unbelief. You know, sometimes we also waver through unbelief. We know that God can do the impossible. We know that there's many things that the Word of God mentions, but then we waver because of unbelief. But here we see that he was strengthened in his faith, and that gave glory to God. What about us this morning? Does our faith, are we strengthened in our faith that eventually brings glory to God? You know, we want to see things happening before we can trust God. But here Abraham, he trusted even when there was absolutely no reasons to hope for or no reason to have uh, trust in God. And this morning, the reason why Noah was called a righteous man was because he did what was expected of him, even when it did not make sense. We know the story where it had never rained before. And here God instructs him to go and build an ark. But because he knew and in faith, he obeys God and he was credited righteous. And this morning, let us ask ourselves, in this journey, we're all running a race and we do not know what tomorrow holds for us. It's an unknown journey. But we can run this unknown journey because there's someone who knows the future ahead of us. But he's calling us to walk in faith. He's calling us to run in faith. And he wants us to be different. So in order for us to be in the ark, primarily, the prerequisite is where God is calling us to be different because that's how he designed us. He wants us to be salt. He wants us to be that light in this world so that we can be that agents of transformation. And as I mentioned already, Noah was determined to do his will. There was absolutely no reason why he should do this. 
In chapter 6, as I mentioned, if you go into details, God gave him specific instructions as to how to build the ark. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. In verse 22, we see that in chapter 6, verse 22. And then in chapter 7, verse 5, we see Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. What about us? Are we determined to obey him? Are we determined to do his will no matter what? We want to do his will, but we also at the same time, there's a battle that's going on inside of us where we want to do our will. Constant battle between doing what he, what, uh, uh, to do things that pleases God and also to do things that can make us feel good. But Noah was determined. Because he was determined, we see the outcome as well. Obedience to the will of God is the pathway to perpetual honor and everlasting joy, as Charles Spurgeon mentions. You know, if we want to truly experience that life and life in abundance that Jesus said I have come to give in John 10.10, 10, the only way we can truly experience that life in all fullness is by obeying and obeying the will of God. And as I mentioned already, Noah obeyed even when he did not make any sense. What about us? Are we willing to obey God even when it does not make sense? Sometimes God asks, God, you know, reminds us to do some crazy things. And we are, we are reasoning it out with God and say, God, you know, should I do or should I not? But if that is what is expected of us, are we willing to step out of the comfort zone and obey Him no matter what? See, the Word of God is the revealed will. You know, we have the revealed will of God and the specific will of God. And often we are trying to figure out God and we're asking God, okay, Lord, what should I do for this specific area in my life? But primarily, we need to be able to ask, is it in line with the revealed will of God? If it is not in line with the revealed will of God, it's not going to be in line with the specific will of God. So if there is contradiction between the revealed and the specific, that means it's not from God. In our day-to-day -day lives, how determined are we to do His will. You know, when we look at the situation around us, when we hear news, there's always news that, you know, that does not give us any joy or happiness. Uh, I'm reminded of my journey in 2005. It took three years before I wrestled with God and when God asked me to step out of my comfort zone and to step into ministry. So I still remember the last day in November when I made the decision because I was battling with pain for so long and until God spoke to me through his word and he says, until you step out of the boat in faith, you're not going to see anything happening. So on 1st of December 2005, I decided to step out of the boat in faith. I gave him my resignation letter, uh, which came as a huge shock for my work colleagues. But that decision that I made today as I look back at the 15 years, I never regretted that decision. But what I want to mention here is in 2006, there was a recession in the UK and most of my colleagues, they lost their jobs. I was in the banking industry and most of them, they lost their jobs. You know, if I continued to do what I thought was right, I would have also fallen into that category. It did not come easy when God told me to step out of the boat in faith, to do, take that step of obedience, but today, that was a lesson that I learned that when God asks us to obey, let's not look at, let's not reason out, but let's obey him no matter what. Like Noah, he was determined to obey God no matter what. And that is why we see that Noah and his family, they were delivered from destruction. What about us this morning? How many of us, we want to be delivered from destruction? There's destruction in the form of disobedience. There's destruction that is awaiting us one day when he'll come to judge this earth, when he will come and reign and rule, and you and I will be left, left out. It doesn't start that moment when we go before God and say, God, I'm sorry for everything that I've done. Yes, as much as God gives us chances every single day, all those chances will come to an end when he comes back to judge this earth. And that day, we should give an account 
of how well we have lived our life. So we see in verse 23 that every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. Everything was wiped out. People and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds were wiped from the earth. But notice here, only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. Not only Noah, but those left with him in the ark and that was his family. Something that I would like to remind men here this morning. Now God wants us to take that godly leadership in our household. Because Noah was righteous, because Noah was blameless, because Noah walked faithfully, not only Noah, but his entire family was saved. Now God wants men to be the priest of the home, priest of our household. You know, he wants us to be Jesus there. He wants us to lead our family in ways in godly ways, according to the word of God. By not leading our family, you know, not only you, but also our family will not be delivered from destruction. Noah was the only one who was saved along with his family because he continued to obey God. He continued to do things even when it did not make sense. And as I mentioned already, it, did, it had not rained for 120 years, but he continued to build the ark even when it not makes sense. Do you want to be delivered from destruction? It starts with a choice. Choice to go into the ark. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20 and 22, it mentions, God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. The same God who waited patiently while the ark was being built is still patient with us. He's still patient so that many will get into the ark. And who is that ark? Jesus. There are still many more people who have not heard the good news. There are many more people who need to get into the ark. And as, the, as God's word mentioned, that he is being patient from his return because he wants all mankind to hear the good news. God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. And God is patient even now. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into the heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. What about us this morning? Are we in the ark? Are we helping others to get into the ark so that they will be delivered from destruction. Finally, the only way that we can continue to be in the ark, continue to walk in obedience, is by diving deeper into his word. We need Jesus, not religion. Sadly, when I look at some of the things that are happening in church, we have gone away from God's original plan for church, the mandate that he gave. The way that we function, you know, I'm sure all of us would know some of the things that are happening in Sri Lanka, in the, in the body of Christ, in the decisions that are being made. Are those decisions in line with God's word? Are they godly decisions? Are we waiting on the Holy Spirit in decisions to make? Why? Because religion has taken over. We did Jesus, not religion, or tradition, or denominational mandate. Sadly, the church, not just in Sri Lanka, around the world, is divided. Denominational mandates, we hold on to our denomination and say, you know what, we are right and these are my, our mandates. And that is why uh, um, Dilu prayed this morning for a spiritual awakening in our church, in all three congregations. Not just in our church, in this nation. Why is that there is no spiritual awakening in this nation? Because we have divided ourselves. Pride, denominational barriers, religion, tradition. 
We don't need any of them. We only need Jesus. Just Jesus, the ark of salvation. Only Jesus can save us from the impending judgment. We can't stand before him and say, you know what, I went to this church. I paid my tithes. I went to church every Sunday. I sang in the choir. No, nope. that's not going to save us. Only Jesus. We cannot add anything else to Jesus. Jesus and Jesus alone can save us. And in order to know him, the place that we need to go is the word of God. This is where we go for that instructions. You know, in chapter 6, God gave Noah specific instructions. Detailed instructions. I don't, I, I'm not going into detail as to what the instructions are. But it, it was given to him as to how to build the ark. And this morning, the only way that we can know the specifics is by diving deep into God's word. This is where we know. This is our blueprint. This is our manual to live this life. Shall we make the choice to dive deep into the word of God? And finally, may I ask you this morning, are you in the ark or are you out? Are you in Christ, like Paul said? Are we in Christ? Are we living a life that honors him? Are we living a life that pleases him? Are we living that blameless life? Are we walking faithfully? So that even today, if the flood comes, even today, if, the, if it is the end, if there is judgment, we will be saved. So this morning, let's ask ourselves, like Noah made that decision, he was determined to walk in line with the word of God, his will, his plans, as we leave this place. May we also make that decision. It starts with the desire desire to walk in line with God's ways. And let's make the decision. Let's be determined. Let's not give up. Yes, when we look at some of the things that are happening, you know, we can easily give up. We can easily wa waver. It can be because of our personal circumstances, the crisis that we go through. We can waver and we can lose hope. But like Noah, who never gave up, who persevered till the very end, who continued to obey everything that the Lord commanded, May we also continue to persevere, continue to obey, continue to do everything that the Lord requires of us so that we, you and I, will be saved. Not just you and I, but also our family, our loved ones. It was only eight people that were saved. But not just eight people. Many more people can be saved if we choose to remain in the ark, if we choose to be in Christ, because Jesus alone the one who can save us. And it's only through him that there is salvation. May God bless you all.
Lord, a loving heart. Father, we pray and ask, Lord, that you will give us hearts of giving. Lord, we pray that you will help us, Father, as those who believe in you, to live within your will, to stay within your ark, and Father, and give as you wish. Father, we pray that you will receive what we give. We pray that you will uh, prompt us, Father, to not keep what is, uh, what is yours, but give to you, Father, our resources, our time, and our efforts, Father. So, Lord, we pray that what we give would be blessed by you, Father, for the betterment of the kingdom. Praying in the name of our Lord and Master. Amen. On behalf of Cinnamon Gardens Baptist Church, I welcome you to our English language service. And uh, again, it's so good to see so many familiar faces we haven't seen in many months. It's a pleasure to have you all worship with us today. Uh, just advance notice of our annual general meeting, which has been fixed for Saturday the 19th of September. Church members, please make a note of this in your diaries and make sure that you are here because it is a very important responsibility of church members to be a part of the business proceedings of the church. And um, I remind you again that today is the fourth Sunday of nominations, uh, and there's one more Sunday left where it is your responsibility as members to nominate uh, the leaders for the next year. We need six deacons, a secretary and treasurer, and the secretary and treasurer of the Deopia Sevener as well. So please do prayerfully consider uh, your responsibility as we look, look to you to nominate the leaders for the year ahead. And continue to pray, please, for the pastorate in the search for a senior mentor to our pastoral team, and pray for the pastoral search committee as uh, so many things have to be considered. Pray for God's wisdom that we will all be led by his Holy Spirit. Next Sunday evening at 5.30 will be the Deus Hua Seva healing service, a service of divine healing conducted by Brother Prasad Pereira and the Deus Hua Seva team. And we invite you to come uh, and experience a time of uh, divine healing, not just physical healing, but spiritual and emotional healing as well. Please share the news with your friends and family. There will be a message going out this evening, so you can share it uh, with anyone you think who would be blessed by attending this service. Last but not least, we want to say happy birthday to Aksha. Very happy birthday to you, and may God bless you in all that you are doing and give you a wonderful year. God bless you all too, and thank you. Let us all rise for the benediction. Let us may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Now let's sing the doxology.